Hello everyone, this is Adrian Tobra. Are you doing a sound check? Give me a yay if you can hear me. I think Ellen can hear me. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really pleased that all of you are here today. This is the start of trading season when all the serious traders get back uh, from vacation. So we have a more consistent behavior in the market. What a great time to learn. By popular demand, Melissa Carmo from Stock Switch Trading is joining us again. Uh, I'm so excited about her being here. She was uh, well received the last time just a couple of months ago. So Melissa, would you take over please? Good afternoon, Adrian. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Give me a heads up. Let me know everything yep, is good. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Adrian. She was so gracious to have me back here today. Adrian with Trading on Target. Adrian focuses on discipline. That's something that every trader needs. What I'm going to talk about today specifically is an all encompass information about the strategy that I personally trade, how to make money in the market. But you're not to forget the discipline that you need to trade because in order to make money on a consistent basis, whether you're trading for a first income, a secondary income, part-time or full-time, you do have to have the necessary discipline. Now, I can see everybody's chats in the room. If you have any questions, you can just type them in there. I can answer them as we go along today. Feel free to ask me any questions as I'm speaking. As Adrian said, my name is Melissa Armo. I own a company called The Stock Swish LLC. Today's topic is earn an achievable income trading half hour a day. The strategy that I train actually happens and sets up very quickly in the morning. In fact, I was done today before 11 o'clock Eastern time, which is why I'm able to talk to you here now. I had plenty of time to trade this morning, have lunch, go work out and come back here and now speak this afternoon. So it's a great strategy, the one that I trade to be able to do other things with your day and incorporate other jobs and things that you have to do. You can go to my website at www.thestockswish.com if you'd like more information or feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you'd like more information as well. I put a lot of videos on YouTube where I talk about the market. I've been calling the market extremely well this entire year. You can go back and trace all the videos I've talked about the market and we're going to talk about that a little bit as well today or anyone has any questions specifically about the market, we can talk about that today too. I like to start out with a quote to be very, very motivational here, I think it takes a lot of passion and drive to trade the market. This is a quote by Les Brown. Your goals are the roadmaps that guide you and show you what is possible for your life. Today we're going to talk about goal setting. And again, this is something that Adrian focuses on too for people. Specifically, goal setting in reference to what you're trying to achieve monetarily and also focusing on a specific strategy that you need to trade the market. And if your goal is to even trade the market at all. I mean, you've got to know that. Why are you doing this? If you don't know why you are doing this, then you have to stop what you are doing. Reevaluate, reassess. Again, fall is a great time to look at all these things. Right now, you could do this in the next week before the busy, busy season really gets underway here, which is going to be fourth quarter earnings season that happens into the fall time of the year, get your goals organized, get yourself situated. This isn't something that has to take like days and weeks and hours on end where you feel like you're giving up a whole weekend. You can get organized with your goals in an afternoon, three hours, two hours, an hour of your day, sit down, get organized. What strategy are you going to trade in the market this fall? How much money do you want to make? And when are you going to stop trading every day? Uh, by the end of the year. Chris is asking me, did we start? Yes, I am speaking. Uh, Chris, can you hear me? Maybe you want to sign back out and sign back in. Maybe Adrian can help you. Sorry, I just saw that. I am talking. Can everybody else hear me? Looks like Tony can. Okay. Okay, very good. Chris, maybe Adrian can help you. So how can you earn an annual income in the market? How can you do this? Well, you've got to have a goal, a strategy specifically that you trade every day. That's part of it. And is it possible for you to make this kind of money in a half hour a day? The answer is yes. Whatever the amount of money it is, whether it's $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, maybe you only want to do it per part time or risk a small amount and only make 30 grand a year. You know, you could have your full time job and your goal could be to make $500 a week. That equates to 100 bucks a day. That is not unrealistic to make. 
And that's $2,000 approximately a month. That's an extra 24 grand a year. And if you have a full-time job and can make an extra 24 grand a year working in a half an hour, 30 minutes every morning, that's a, that's a nice extra part-time job. You wouldn't get paid that in any other type of job or only working 30 minutes a day. Uh, specifically, if you wanted to pick up extra work, you'd have to schedule it around your full-time job. The nice thing about the strategy I trained, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, is it happens early in the morning between 9.30 and 10 a.m., right when the market opens. The market opens at 9.30 Eastern Time, the U.S. stock market, and I'm looking for the trades to set up in that afternoon, uh, in that early morning period. I'm not in the afternoon trading. Now, before we get into specifically the strategy, I'm going to talk about something that I decided to do last week. I did a class last week. It was an advanced class on entries, and I realized that most traders do not understand the market. So do most traders understand the market? The fact is, no, they don't. Uh, Mark is asking, when do you need to be at the computer? You need to be ready to go by 9.30. You can do the prep work between 9 and 9.30 or 8.45-ish and 9.30. You're getting ready to trade, getting organized, and then you were looking for the entries between 9.30 and 10 to take them and get out. So you have to, you know, you have to prepare yourself a little bit. And we're going to talk about that in here to get it organized. I think the more prepared you are before you take a trade, knowing what stock you want to trade. I know exactly what stock I'm going to trade before the market even opens. I know exactly what stock I'm going to trade before the market even opens. I did PBY today as a short. You can look at it. In fact, I have the video on my YouTube site. I knew that I liked that before the open. Okay? So... It, it keeps me focused. Again, not only do I have longer term goals for my week, for my month, for my year, I also have specific goals on the day where I'm looking for one setup in one specific stock. Okay. Now getting back to here what I was saying, I think a lot of traders have a difficulty with accepting the market for what it is. Accept the market for what it is. Accept the environment. There is a sea of people to trade the market unwilling to accept the market for its true self. The market is a place for risk takers to succeed and profit. This is a quote from me. The fact is, if you are unwilling to accept the environment that the market is, embrace it. Love it for what it is. It's going to be difficult for you to be successful trading. I think a lot of people go into the market. They want to make money. They want to be successful. They love the concept. Conceptually, they love the idea of making a lot of money trading. However, you have to accept that it is a place for risk takers to succeed. Okay. How do I know what stock to pick? I have a rating system to, that I use, a checklist that I go through to find each pick. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit here. Dan. In fact, I was talking to a gentleman earlier today that had been referred by one of my students. He said for 40 years he's been trading the market. He has a difficult time picking the right stock every day. That's his biggest problem. By the time he decides what he has to do or what he likes, the move's already gone and he missed it. Okay. So I have a way to figure all that before 930 Eastern time. So getting back to here, and we're going to talk about that more, Dan, in a little bit more detail. Well, before I get into that, I think it's very important for those that are willing to take risk and do the work, you can succeed. You can. You can do it. Ask Adrian. She knows people that are making money doing this. She knows. Okay? Those that cannot do both do not succeed. A trillion people trade in the market with no conception of this fact. They do not accept or understand risk in the market. So the important thing to know is that it can be done. You can be successful. You can make money trading. If you do not believe that you can, you won't. Okay. If you have had some issues and you've lost the confidence, the conviction in yourself or the market, take a step back, take a little break, take a rest. Okay. Because you do have to believe that you will succeed to do it. Yes, you can swing trade this too. You can swing trade it, long-term core trade it, or do day trades in the method that I'm going to show you with the stock picks because the, the rating system tells you the directional bias. So it depends on you how long that you want to actually be in it for. You still have to determine your risk, your monetary risk to take the trade, and then the targets. The very essence of the market is that it requires risk to profit. You will not make money in the stock market without taking risk or being willing to take the risk. And again, you have to embrace it. In fact, the more money you risk, the more money you have the potential to make. That's true, too. There are different kinds of risks, though, which we'll discuss, mainly the risk that we will focus on today, which is calculated risk, which is not risk willy-nilly. 
It's I know I want to do this. I know I like PBY today. PBY rates according to my 26 point rating system and I like PBY as a short. And I'm going to risk this much on it and it's not going to go over this level of resistance and I'm going to take one trade in it. That's an example of calculated risk. That's how I trade. However, the nature of trading is that it involves risk, and you must be willing to take risk in order to trade successfully. So the type of risk you need to be successful is calculated risk. How do you do something every day where you can be like that? Because we're all in this place where we're like, oh, we want to make all this money. We get up in the morning, we're so excited, and many people are in different trading rooms. If you are not focused and goal-oriented with a specific strategy and a system to do, it's going to be very difficult for you to understand and grab hold of that idea of calculated risk because you're going to want to do a lot of different things, okay? And then you're going to end up over trading. Some things are going to work. Some things are not going to work. The best days I've ever had, I did one trade in one stock, the biggest days I've ever had, okay? So it's not about trading, 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 trading a million hours all day long. You can do one setup very early in the morning, one trade, one pick, and do it. And you know what? You're never going to go off the deep end if you only do one. That's the other thing, too. You, it, let's say you do one and it doesn't even work. Okay, you calculated the risk for the trade to work. It failed. You took the loss. Boom. You took one loss. One loss in one trade should, should not hurt anyone, okay? So the days they go into work, you have the nice trades and they set up. And if one doesn't work, then, then you're out, okay? So it's about a plan and a system. Eureka, this is it, okay? You have to have a plan and you have to have a system in order to make the money consistently. Now, here was one of the trades. This is Cree. This is a pick that I had. It was back in August. Stock ticker name is Cree and I looked to short it. Here was the gap. Now, we're going to talk more in a minute. How did I pick this? I picked this because I have a way to figure out this is going to work based on the stock gapping. The stock closed the night before up here at 49 something on the day here of the 12th of August. And the next morning, it opened up here around 45 ish. So I look to short this stock on the day. How did I know this is going to work? Because I get up before 9.30, before the market opens. I go through my checklist, boom, boom, boom. And then I figure out, yeah, this is a good one. And then I know this is going to work in the direction of the gap. So the stock's gapping down. If I'm looking to do it in the direction of the gap down, I'm looking to short it. So the stock gap down, I'm looking to short it. How do I know to short it? I use my checklist to determine that. Again, in order to be a professional, you have to have a focus. The checklist helps me stay focused, and it does help other people stay focused, too, on what? On the pick, on getting the top pick. Now, you can have two picks or three picks. You could do as many things as rate according to the system. I like to do one, maybe two. Uh, I actually did two today, but the big one was PBY. And, you know, I think it's just about finding and narrowing it down. One or two is fine. This idea of doing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things or ten different trades can really, it can really take you off your focus. Because I saw it, Alan's saying, how did I know that this was going to gap down? Because I saw it on my level two before the open. That's why you have to look before the open to see it, okay? I, I saw it. I saw it before, okay? Now, here is the actual setup. The stock open rally, you have to look for the entry, boom. Short, drop, rally back, boom. Nice move in here again. The setup happened here approximately 9.35, went into 10 o'clock. And this is it. This is boom. That's all you need right there. Entry time is 9.35. Price of the entry is 45.24. Again, this is a short. Risk is 36 cents. This is how you're calculating your risk. You're saying, I'm going to risk 36 cents. How much money do I run a risk of my own cash lots? Well, you have to determine this amount should be the same or close to the same for each trade you take or roughly thereabouts. $540 is an advanced risk. And according to this, with a 36 cent stop, you could have taken 1,500 shares. It dropped, had a beautiful move into the reversal time, total profit $1,635. This is, you know, this is a nice trade. It's 3.0 times the amount of risk made in profit. So for every dollar you risked, you made three. Okay? And this all happened in less than half an hour. And you don't even need to trade like this every day. But I can tell you, if you can get two, three of these a week, okay? And in earnings season, in the busy season, which is fall, 
heavy trading season, you, you can get these every day. I mean, you really, really can. You have to know what to watch. Why? Because the move, look, this move happens fast. And I'll, I'll show you this back here. We're going back to the daily chart to see how the stock closed. The stock actually closed like a doji. It did not have a body, a heavy, heavy body, although the stock is lower, but the day didn't have a heavy body. So if you were waiting to do something after the trade that I actually got out of, after the exit that I actually had, if you were waiting for that, then you missed it. You missed the short. You didn't get it. You didn't get anything with this for the profit. And, you know, that's the thing. So you really had to actually take the trade very quickly in order to get the money, in order to get the short. You would have needed, uh, John is asking me about the, the, I think you're asking about buying power. You use in an account, if you're looking to short, if you're looking to do something, you will use a margin account or leverage. So you don't need, for example, if the strike price, let me go back here, of this is $45.24, you don't need $45.24 times $1,500 in cash. You need 45 times 24 cents times 1,500 shares divided by your margin. So, for example, if your margin on this one is, let's just say you're, you have a margin account of 4 to 1, 45, 24 times 1,500 divided by 4, you would have needed 69.65 in cash. Do you follow me, John? The actual cost to short the stock is 67,000 plus, but that's in buying power. See, I'm flat these trades by the end of the day. So I'm trading in an account where you're getting leverage. And again, you have to talk to the broker about that, uh, depending on the type of actual brokerage account that you have. Uh, Susan is asking me, do I ever do trades with options? I don't. I know people that do, people that are trading in the live trading room with me that actually do that. I personally don't because I like to do the day trades and I like to be flattened out every day and it's just my thing. But uh, there are people that use my rating system to get the pick in the right direction and then do an option in it. Yes. So the answer is yes. Am I doing that? No. But could you? Yes. Still same concept. Trading direction. Still have to assess your risk correctly. Okay. Now the one thing here I wanted to talk about before I get more specifically into the strategy that I do is that I want you to think about when you first, first started out trading, if you are a trader now. And if you're not, then you're, then you're just right here today, brand new day, first day of your life here as a trader. Most people start the market out here based on their what? Their confidence. The C is for confidence here. You're loving the market. You're very optimistic. You're very confident in yourself. You're smart. You're a go-getter. And then something happens where you start to trade and your confidence goes down as you are making mistakes and losing money in the market. Let's say you started doing something and it doesn't work right or, or, or you got into tr over trading or just had a bad loss or don't have a strategy and you just started trading. You just watched TV, got a pick, did it. It didn't work out. Then you did something, you made a little money. Now your confidence goes back up a little bit, not back where it used to be, uh, but you're still, you know, confident somewhat. And then you have another loss because you don't have a strategy or focus at all. And then your confidence goes down again. Then you make a little bit of a profit. And every time this wiggly jiggly is happening here, this is basically your confidence going down while you're losing and confidence going up a little while you're winning. But do you see that you basically the curve is down. The direction of the arrow is down all the time. The equity curve is going down. Your confidence is going down as you're trading. And this is where most people, we divvy this up into two, most people are over here to the left. This is the majority of people that trade the market. And by the way, this will always be this way. Uh, people are greatly affected when they start to lose in reference to their confidence. And then what happens? And they continue to make more bad choices and poor choices. And as their equity curve is going down, then they don't want to commit themselves to learning new information or strategies or things like I'm talking about today because their confidence is low. Their confidence is going down. And I'm telling you, if you need one thing, you need to have your confidence be high, all right? Because you need that to do this. I'm not pressing the buttons for you. You have to press the buttons for you. Now, over here we have what is very few people, okay? The C for the confidence where the it's actually going higher. Now, this is you. You start out. What do you want? What do you hope to achieve? What are your goals? That's your confidence grows over time. You get better as a trader. You have a couple bad days, you dip up, you dip down, but overall, you're making money over time. 
and in a couple of years, your confidence is very high. This is me, actually. I didn't realize in this until I started talking. I just started talking, and I just drew this, and it just came to me when I did it, and that's what I'm talking about today. I was talking about this in a class of the room. I don't remember, and I realized this is me, and this is the way it's supposed to be, by the way. So I'm an example for people. That's why I'm good at running the live room. I've been training for six years. My confidence now is the highest it has ever been, and by the way, it'll continue to grow. Why? Because I'm getting better, and that's the way it's supposed to be. If you had a regular job, if you were a doctor or a dentist or a business person or worked anywhere, I don't care where you are at a job, in an environment, you would start out brand new at this job, at this thing you were starting to do, whatever profession you would choose, and you would get better over time. And you would make more money over time because they pay you more because you're getting better and you're doing better and you get raises. This is the way it's supposed to be. I mean, this is the way it is in 99.99% .99 of the professions that exist in the planet except for what? training. Why? Because people are so greatly affected by losses in their confidence level. And the equity curve follows that C. But if you think on a practical level, which is why I thought I'd better talk about this today so people can just understand how important it is to have that confidence level up. It is supposed to be where it's growing, you're getting better over time. And the good news is that if you learn something that works, that is exactly where you will be if you have a mentor or someone like me or me to help you get to that point. Because this makes sense. In practicality, on normal levels, in any other job, you would get better over time, you would make more money over time, you would risk more over time, you would make more over time, you'd see things clearer over time, and you would, you would, you would just continue to go and get better. Not this, okay. However, this is how many people are. And like the gentleman I talked to today, he's been training for 40 years. I mean, I could tell you stories of all kinds of things that people have told me. And, and, and people never, never get off this trail here. I don't know how they do it, okay? This is detrimental to your personal health as well. It takes a toll on you, stress. So you've got to learn a system that pays, and the system that I do is GAPS. And we're going to talk about this one here today. This was a GAP. It's called LF. That was the name of the stock of this one here. And we're going to talk about this one today, but I do GAPS. I named my method or my system called Golden Gaps because I'm rating the gap and I'm looking at 26 points to actually rate the gap to determine what direction it's going to go on the day in the gap. It's really about how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? Train a strategy that's profitable. Professional gaps are a highly profitable strategy because they create large momentum to trade. What stocks should you trade? Stocks that gap and rate 20 points or more per the Golden Gap 26-point rating system. Trade the gap in the direction of the gap if it rates 20 points or more. That's the rule. When do you trade them? Early in the morning on the open when they set up and trigger from 9.30 into 10 o'clock. I'm not trading the pre-market, but I'm prepping in that time frame and looking to get in the trades before 10 a.m. Ultimately, one strategy is all you need to stay focused, and I think less is more in reference to the market. You make more money, the less trades you take. You make more money, the less ticker symbols that are in your actual P&L by the end of the day. One strategy is all you need to earn a good living month in the market. Playing professional gaps is a powerful strategy that offers the opportunity to earn $20,000 a month for individual traders. And you know what? Some people don't even need this. So the good thing is that, you know, you can set your own goals. Traders can book profits with substantial gains in a timely fashion early in the morning, which I like because I can have a life, and you can make money to pay your bills, live a full life, and work in less than an hour a day. Booking money quickly reduces risk and exciting and it's fun. You know, every day I get up and I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do Thursday. I don't know what I'm going to do Friday. Every day is a new day for me. I trade a different stock every day in a different pick. I never know what I'm going to do until I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. Sometimes I see one at night. And I might like it at night, but I really just usually wait till the morning. And you don't know. I mean, that's the exciting thing about life. If you knew everything was going to happen to you from now until the rest of the year, how boring would your life be? You get up like a zombie, like a robot. The fact is trading is exciting that you don't know what's going to happen to you. You do not know every day. And it's even more exciting doing gaps because you really don't even know what you're going to trade. The point I'm trying to make, though, here is that one quality strategy is all you need if you really want to do this for an income, for a full-time income. That's all you need to pay yourself on a regular basis. Knowing it, knowing the strategy you can replicate over and over for profits can change your trading world because it's going to turn that negative curve that's pointing down into a, a positive one, not just for your P&L, but your confidence. Having one powerful strategy that pays will open up your eyes to the true profit potential of the market.
The market can offer your real lifelong career if you have a strategy that makes money consistently. And the idea is to get better over time, not worse, not worse, better over time, okay? Working on it, doing the work, learning, going through the process, making more money, seeing things clear over time, seeing the gaps easier. Professional gaps are a strategy that can generate up to $20,000 a month or more in profits. And earning a high income is only one reason, however, to trade gaps. It's not as unrealistic as a lot of traders think to make this kind of money. Successful traders know it's realistic. Of course, there's more people that are unsuccessful than successful. But the fact is, if you break it down, $750 a day is $37.50 a week. So you don't even need to make $1,000 a day necessarily to hit this kind of number. $37.50 a week is $195 a year. That's basically $200 a year. And that's an annual income. Boom, that's an annual income. It is not unrealistic once you break it down and make $750 a day. Why? Some days you will do a trade. It will not work. You will take a loss. One loss. Some days you'll do a trade. You'll make $1,600, $1,500, $2,000. $2, so it's not like you make exactly $750 a day. But overall, if you average it out to $750, you can see how you can hit it. So you got to be very realistic with yourself. But if you break it down like that, I call chunking it out. You chunk it out. You chunk out a week. You chunk out a month. You chunk out a year. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're like, oh, my goodness. I'm, You know, you can see how it comes together. Trading for an annual income means consistently doing the same strategy and system over and over and over and doing it well. Uh, Ken P is asking a question. Do you have a stock screen or scanner for certain stock characteristics that you use for the gap setup or any other strategy? First of all, I only do my strategy that I created. That's the only thing I trade. Only thing I trade. That's the only thing I'll ever trade, actually, because of the fact that I love gaps so much and there's so much power to them. Do I have a scanner? Yes, it's one that comes to my platform. You don't need to buy a second scanner unless you want to. I did do that for a while, then I found like I had too many things that were doubling up. So I just use the one on the platform, actually. So you could buy a separate scanner if you want to, but it's not necessary. And everybody should have a scanner with their platform. Uh, it's included in the price of the platform that you're paying. If you don't know where to find it or how to find it, you just got to call the uh, customer service support for your platform and ask them because everyone has them. So this is what I do. I focus on one stock. And me, particularly me, this is my personality. I like to short. We're going to talk about all shorts today, although I'm going to point out some bullish gaps that happen too. You could do the bullish gaps and flip the points for the bullish side. So you'd be buying stocks that gap up. I'm going to show you a few. I like to do the shorts. So not only do I focus on one strategy, one pick, I do it in one direction. Talk about, talk about fo focus, okay? <clears throat> I have the time of the day focus, the stock pick focus, the strategy focus, the setup focus, the, the stock ticker focus, the target. I, I, have all, I, I have all the focus that any person could possibly have in, in the shortest time period of the day, which is the most uh, time of the day that has the most momentum in it, actually. There's more momentum that happens in the first 30 minutes of the day than any other time of the day. Ultimately, it is about balance balance and the body. What does this mean? It means if you are out of balance, physically, emotionally, spiritually, in any reference, you will have difficulty making the right choices to stay focused. So one of the things that you need to do to be successful is be focused. And if your confidence level is down, what happens is you get stressed out. You continue to go down and lose more money. Your confidence continues to go down, your PL continues to go down, and your stress level is high, and your balance is, is not there. In order to get yourself in the right balance, sometimes you need to pull yourself back, reevaluate, and change. Change something that you're doing. Change it. Just change. Just, just decide to change. Just leave it all go, whatever you've been doing, for a year, for two years, for five, for six, for ten, for forty years, and say, oh, I'm wa washing my hands of this thing. I've been after this strategy forever. It's not working. I'm done with it. And that's the end of it. And you just change. And you do something completely different. Okay? And maybe it's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Maybe it's my strategy. Maybe it's taking my class. Maybe it's gaps. Or maybe it's something else. You have to know what resonates for you. You have to know what resonates for you. But I'm telling you, if you were on this downward spiral path where your confidence is going down, you're just going to continue to lose. you got to snip it in the butt. Okay? Because you don't want to be on the side of the people that are losing. 
So the one good thing about gaps is fast early profits. Extremely important for you to do other things in your day and know where you're at on the day as well. You don't have to sweat it out in a trade that's, that you're down in for hours. I also like the personal freedom uh, to your day that you can have because you're not trading all day. And you know your eyes get tired, your brain gets tired, your reflexes are tired as the day goes on. The other thing I like about gaps is they have good risk reward setups. Very, very good risk to reward setups like the one I showed you there. And we're going to talk about a couple of examples. I'm typically looking to risk a dollar to make three. Now, does that mean that every single trade goes to three? No. Now I have targets. Some go to one, some go to two, some go to three, some go to ten. Okay? You look for the targets in the stock to play it out. And as I was saying, gaps have momentum. This is a setup that happened here in LF. We're going to go over this in a little bit. This was a gap. This is a one-minute chart. You can see the momentum that came into the stock very quickly. Now, this one is a cheaper price point. Here you can see where the entry was, and this one is around $6.70. The other one was around $45. So you would need less buying power for this one. Uh, you know, you just never know. Typically, the stocks that I trade are anywhere, I'd say, from 3 to $5, although that's on the cheap end, all the way up to 100 bucks. But I'm typically trading stuff that's anywhere between, I'd say, 10 and $50. Uh, it's not to say that I have any limitations. I'll do a stock and a gap that I like if it's high priced or low priced, but it has to rate for my system or I'm not doing it no matter what it does. In fact, there was one last week. Oh my gosh, I forget what it was called. Uh, ZQK. ZQK <laughs> actually didn't do it, even though it was a good gap and it had the most momentum in it and I didn't do it because it was too cheap. And I was like, oh my goodness. So you can't even discount the cheapies. You can't even discount the cheapies. Cheapies can have good risk to reward trades and good momentum. So you just never know. It all has to do with the gap. you got to have a strategy there. The strategy has to be intact. It's not necessarily how much it costs. All right, let's talk about golden gaps. This is, again, the strategy that I trade. They're really professional gaps. What is a professional gap? A professional gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. Simple. It is called a professional gap because professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap. In the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock was higher on the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap, professionals are selling and are shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower on the trading day. This is why, though, I prefer bearish gaps. Gaps that create downward direction, that gap down, from two things happening them usually, selling and shorting. Okay, therefore, they have double the potential for a move. That's why I tend to like the downside. Also, most people do not know how to trade shorting well. Uh, very successfully, and I'm very good with shorting. So I find that I have an edge to do shorts, actually. I, I particularly have an edge doing shorts, uh, and I'm very good at doing it. And it's mostly what I've done for the last six years. It's a long time to be doing nothing but shorts. I mean, nothing but shorts. I might go long three times a year, literally. But let's talk about one long here. This was a professional gap. It was a bullish gap. It was a bullish event that happened in the chart. This was GMCR. What happened here? The stock gap up. The stock closed here the night before at around 117.50. Got up the next morning. The stock was gapped up here at around 125-ish. Stock ran $10 on the day. Uh, this is a beautiful trade in here. Even this one was high price stock and had a big stop, but it ran $10 on the day. And look at the power and strength of this. So this is a professional bullish gap. It's a golden gap, but a bullish one. You would look to buy this. Now here was the LF, okay? This is what I talked about earlier. Stock closed the night before up here around $7.37. You're looking for the gap in the morning. You see it, it's down here around 6.40ish or thereabouts. Stock rallied on the day and you take the short and it drops and you're shorting it. We're not buying this, you're shorting it. And I'll go over it in a minute here, how the setup happened. But this was a short. It actually went to the dream target too, which was $6. So who makes these gaps and why do they work so well like this, specifically ones that rate high and why I made the rating system in the first place was to get the momentum move of it is because they're made by institutions. It's institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. Okay, the gap could not happen if all of us in here took 5,000 shares of everything of the day that I like as a pick. PBY today, we all shorted 5,000 shares of that right at the stop. Boom. We could not make that stop gap. Okay, the only thing that can make a stock gap is real money by institutions. The professional gaps that happen to play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction and confidence, by the way, too. 
at the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it in the direction of the gap. Gaps are an event in the life of a chart or a stock, and they create a sense of urgency. What should we do? What should we do? Oh my gosh, the stock is gapping down. What do I do? I want to sell it. If you're long, you might want to sell it. So it creates an event with a gap that's happening, okay? So there's a sense of urgency. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. And that's what makes them move. So gaps offer a payout with good risk to reward trades. There is no substitute, though, for learning how to do this because knowing how and what to trade will make a big difference in your results. Again, your confidence will be high. If you know what to do, you'll feel confident in yourself and the choices you make because, again, you have to press the button. Gap trading is a lucrative method to use to get paid by the market. And not only that, it can be done. I'm teaching people. I've had the business now for two years, and I've taught people to do it, and they're with me. Okay, They're with me in the room, and I've taught them how to do it. They're still with me in the room because they love my analysis. But the fact is you can learn this. So you can go from the left-hand side of the C where your confidence is low and you're losing to turning it around. You can do it. I have helped people do that. Trading is about generating income. Gap trading offers traders visible income production on a regular basis. Uh, let me just see here. Scott F. has a question. Are you shooting for 70% plus win ratio using your method? I'm not shooting for anything but making money on the day. Do I go back and look at my results and say what are percentages of things that I'm doing? No, I haven't done that for a long, long time. I was looking at that when I was creating my system, if you want me to be honest with you, but that was a long time ago. I've been doing what I'm doing now for so long that I don't go back and do that. I know the money I make on the day, I'm looking at what I'm making as far as the risk reward and the trade, and then I see what I'm up. And to be honest with you, some days I'm up a good amount of money, and it might not even be a three-hour trade, but I'm happy with the money I'm up, and I'm up. So because I make more money more days than I ever lose, I don't even look at that anymore if you want me to be honest with you. But when I was creating the system, trying to figure out the points, I did look at that. But that was a long time ago now. If you want to trade for a living, then it's important to learn how to do something you can replicate in the market over and over. If you've been looking to earn a high income, look no further. Golden gaps are a very profitable strategy to trade. So how do you find golden gaps? You look for the gaps and then you rate them. So here's what I was talking about earlier. It's a checklist. Do, do, do. You go through the checklist and you check it off. It's really not that hard. You just got to know what to look for. And that's where many people fail. They have no idea what they're supposed to be looking for. They don't have a focus on a strategy at all, and then they don't know what they're supposed to look for in the stock. So I teach that in the class. This is what you're looking for. Check it, check it, check it. You tally them up at the end. You do the highest rated one or any one that rates over 20 if you want to do more than one. I like to focus on number one because of the risk I'm taking in them. And I'm running the room. But you could do as many as rate per the system. Dan is asking, what size of an account should you have? There is no specific criteria or requirements. I'll learn a little bit later here towards the end. I'm going to talk about percentage of risk based on the size of the account. If you can hang on in a few minutes here. I will talk about that specifically, but there isn't like a rule or something. You, you have to base it off of your actual cash, though. Okay, so the 26-point rating system. It measures gaps by rating them on the daily chart. It's a daily chart. The daily chart. I'm looking at the daily chart to find the stocks to trade. And I'm looking for stocks that are number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire trading day. Number two, a big move on the day. Number three, early confirmation of the bias and move between 9.30 and 10. Number four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. Because that's how you're going to make money ultimately. Now, as I was saying, fast means fast, which means you could be in a trade literally for five minutes to make money. I mean, I'm just, it's seriously. And I'm going to show you one here that happened in less time than that. This was a gap in shield, okay? The stock closed the night before up here around 35 something, opened the next day down here around 34 something, the stock gap down, and it was a short. This trade, this move, had a quick, quick move in here right into the open. You could have shorted the stock here and gotten out in here. This is a dollar in 60 seconds. And so you could have done this and just got right out. Then you'd be looking to retake it because this is too much money, too quick, too fast to not take it. And you don't know if it's going to reset up or not. So you could have actually done this and not done another trade on the day. Or you could have done this and done the other trade. Okay. Second setup happened in here and dropped. Okay. So this happened in you know a minute. Entry time of this first trade was 9.31. Price of the trigger was 34.54. Again, assess your risk according to the placement of the stop. I use hard stops. That's how I'm taking the calculated risk. I'm not going to risk more than I'm taking the share size. 
So I take the share size here, I'm taking 1,500 shares. The risk is 37 cents based on where I put the stop. Exit is 33.51, goes into the double bottom, boom, okay? And this happened in literally a minute, okay? So again, very, very fast. And you could have made $1,500. This is almost a three-hour trade that happened in a minute. Let's go back and look at it. Boom. Okay. And again, I have certain rules or things I'm looking for, numbers to know that you should have gotten out of that, basically. And that's why I teach in the class. But because it had the nice sell-off there, you're looking for a second setup. The second setup happened in here. Again, time of the day, 9.45. Time of the day, before 10 o'clock. And then you can do the second one. Second entry, 9.45. Price triggers 34.48. Risk is 27 cents. This is a little bit better. You can take a little bit more. Again, assessing the same amount of monetary dollar for dollar risk, 5.40 here. Gives you 2,000 shares. So if you want to see how much buying power you need for this, Price triggers 34.48. You take 34.48 times 2,000. 68.960 you divided by 4. If that's your margin, you need 17.240. And if you don't have that, then you take 1,000. You take what you can afford, okay? Again, you have to start somewhere. If you're in a downward spiral and you're losing, and all of a sudden you learn a strategy that you're winning in, isn't it better to make what you can afford to make with the size of your account now to get to the point where you're making more? Yes. The answer is yes. If your choice is continuing to lose or... Taking the money that you have, risking small amounts to start making it to get your equity curve up and strong again, then that's what you do, okay? You have to be uh, realistic. You look forward for your goals. You have your goals right now, the immediate goals, the short-term goals, and then the long-term goals. If you're not in a position to be able to take a risk of $500 in the train, maybe you're in a position to risk 100 Do it. If you can make the money, why keep doing something that's not working? You do something that is working. What happens is a lot of people... Are, are losing, and then they want to try to have this big, tremendous, huge day that they think is going to make back half their losses that they ever had over the course of their life. So they take an, an incredible amount of risk for the type of trade, and it's not warranted, thinking they're going to have some huge, massive play, like thinking that one of these gaps is going to fill the gap or something, like in, like in Cree. Um, it, it, you know, that's just not the right thing to look at or do. Risk to more this was really nice. This is a second trade. It was almost seven hours. Plus, you could have done the one where you made this. So you could have made fifteen hundred in the first one. If this second trade had failed, you would have still been a thousand dollars on the day profit. Okay, I'll take a thousand dollars on the day. If it had worked, which it did, then you would have made, if you did two trades, over five grand on the day. Okay. And actually, you don't have to take another trade the rest of the week if you don't want to. Oh, here. Now I was going to talk about the buying power. How much do you need? I think if you want to take an intermediate risk to advance, okay? I think 100,000 buying power gets you in a, like almost everything. There's going to be some very expensive stocks that maybe you can't take the kind of size you want with that. But I mean, 100,000 buying power, this isn't cash, is, is, is terrific, okay? That's more than enough. Do you need that in order to trade the system though? No, you don't. You take the amount of the size of the money you have and divvy up the risk. And that's how you do it. Because you have to start somewhere. If you can only afford to risk uh, a 500 shares in something like this shield, if you didn't risk, uh, if you took 500 shares of this instead of 2,000, you still had a great trade. Okay. If a stock moves two dollars on the day and you have 500 shares, that's a thousand bucks. That's still a thousand bucks in a trade like this. Okay. So you have to do what you can afford. The key is making money, no matter what amount of money that you can. And getting your confidence back on track. you got to get that confidence back on track. I'm telling you, there's nothing like green to get your confidence back on track. There's nothing like paying yourself. If you have been trading and you can't pay yourself on a regular basis, your confidence is in the toilet. You know what starts to happen? You feel like you're playing a computer game. It's like you're playing Ms. Pac-Man. You're like... Do, 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 do. You're pressing the buttons and you forget that it's actually money and it's your money that you're doing it. Because, like, you have no concept of the fact that it's money because you haven't been paying yourself. You have a concept of it's money when the broker calls and tells you you have to refund your account, you have a margin call. But as far as paying yourself, you have no concept of that money because you're not paying yourself. So, I don't care if you have to pay yourself 500 bucks a week for two months. That would allow you to get your confidence up, to start going forward to making real money if your confidence is in the toilet. 
How are you going to ever make a trade where you're making $2,000 a day or $1,500 a day if you can't even make $150 a day? Make $100 a day for two weeks, pay yourself. Check it out. Call the broker, cash out that money you just made for two weeks. You're going to feel great, okay? You're going to say, yeah, this is what it's supposed to be, okay? Because it's not supposed to be the other way around. And you have to remember that. If I actually, like, ran a live trading floor like a desk where I had people like under me where I would call the trades and everyone would do exactly what I tell them to do you know how I would manage people is you know, I would make sure that they were able to pay themselves and I would if somebody was not doing the right thing or not following me or not doing the system right I, I'd have to revamp them if they couldn't pay themselves in fact, I'm, I almost might instill something where it would be like a major thing, and I'd use them as an example with people. And then they'd be so embarrassed that they would, they would want to, I'd do it like a contest. Like, who is going to do it, one against the other, so that people do it, and they don't, they're not the person on the shelf that has to sit in the corner. You know when you were little and you had to sit in the corner if you got in trouble? It would be like that, where you would, you would insist to force the discipline to do it so, you, so all your friends would like you. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, if you don't like you enough to actually pay yourself, then do you think the market does? Like, seriously? Do you think the market cares about paying you if you don't want to pay yourself? If you don't want to pay yourself, the market doesn't care about you at all and will continue to take your money. And it will take it forever as long as you give it and want to do something that does not work. And that equity curve can go on for 40 years or as long as you live, okay, while you're doing another job that funds your trading losses forever and ever and ever. You are doing this for the purpose of making money. That is the purpose. you got to get your confidence level up, and you have to be profitable. And it really doesn't even matter the amount at the beginning because there's nothing like green to turn it all around for you. And it has to be consistent, enough to pay yourself. And it's not going to happen in one huge trade in one day. It's going to happen by doing the right things day after day after day after week after month after year. Okay? That's, that is the right way to do it. All right, let's look at the setup here in LF. If it out, open, rally, rallying up here. You could have shorted it here. You could have shorted it here. Stock drop. Again, target for this was 625. It ended up going to the dream target of basically $6. Price of the entry, though, is at 938 of 670. This is the second setup. Risk here is a lot less. 12 cents is a nice risk. Price point is lower. On 5,000 shares of this, again, how much buying power would you have needed? Not even that much at all. 35 some thousand or thereabouts. $600 if you risked it, exit at 625 was 2250 Risk to reward in this is almost four, 3.75. If you stayed in it though to 609, you actually made more than this. You actually made more than 2250. Nice day in here. <laughs> Again, time of the trade was in a half an hour. Beautiful trade. So any more questions about gaps as I'm as I'm going through here, ask me. In today's world, more income ultimately means more security. Why? Because you're relying on yourself and your own ability to be able to trade the market. So if you're at a place where you're happy with your job right now and you're not ready to retire and you don't really want to quit your job and you like it and you're good at what you do, you could still trade and learn how to trade and do it part-time or when you have time for extra savings or for some time in your future that you may want this information and this ability and this skill. Because it will come a time where maybe you want to retire and then you realize that you don't want to have to get a part-time job after you're retired and you can't live on Social Security and you can't live on your pension or maybe you don't even have a pension anymore, which most people don't, and you could trade the market. And it's really not something that, I mean, it's basically such a small time of the day that you're doing it, we still feel like you're retired. But you'd have the skill set already until waiting until you're actually retired where you're trying to force yourself to learn the skill set. The, the younger you are to learn this information, the, the earlier you start, the better it is. Why? Because you could be doing it for longer number of years to get better over time. Because, again, that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's the way it is in many careers and professions. And you've got to think about that on a practical level. That is what it is supposed to be. It is not the way that it is for many people, but it is what it is supposed to be. It's about putting a plan of action in place. Uh, Rob is having a question here. Let me ask this here before I go to the next slide. Many gaps don't work. Maybe for you, Rox. So what gap characteristics are you looking for? I teach that in the class, Rox. And also, I couldn't even talk about that here in the next time I have left at Raydreams. I, I couldn't even talk about that. The class is 16 hours. <laughs> so I couldn't even tell you. But I teach it in the class, okay? which I'm doing this weekend. I'll, I'll tell you the dates. But 
it's not true that most gaps don't work. In fact, Tom, is Tom still in here? I saw Tom was here. Tom did my class. Tom's a student of mine. I saw you in here, Tom. Are you still here? <laughs> no, Tom signed out, it looks like. Sanford's here. Sanford did my class. Sanford did my class. Tom was here at the beginning. It looks like he signed out. I have, actually, some of my students are here today. Sanford's a student. And Tom, they both did the class. I'm sure they would disagree with you that most gaps don't work. Not in my world. So, you know, you have to know the right ones to pick them. It just goes back to the same thing. It goes back to the same thing I was saying at the beginning. It goes back to the same thing as the gentleman I talked to earlier today. It's about the pick. It's about the pick. If you find that most gaps don't work, it's because you're looking at the wrong characteristics. It's because you're looking at the wrong pick, the wrong stock. You don't know how to play it. You think the gap's going to fill itself. You think it's going to go down. You think it's going to go up. Like GMCR. GMCR was a long, which people probably would not have known to even go long that because the stock gap got $10 overnight. Most traders are looking to short that to fill the gap. wrong -o. It gapped up and hung in midair and rallied $10. And it was a 10R trade, that GMCR. And that was an expensive one. That's just one example of a billion. And most traders are looking to short that today. PBY. Look at PBY today. I don't have it in here. Go to my YouTube video. You can look at PBY today. Try to try to buy that. You can see the place that they tried to buy that at 935. The stock booped over the high of the day. I had to stop at the right place. I stayed in the trade. It dropped. I did the ad. I took more of that into the short. And it went on to work as a short. And traders tried to buy that today. So if you try to buy that today, you're mindset would be most gaps don't work because you're looking to buy that stock and it was a short. It's because you're doing them in the wrong direction because you don't know what to look for. Okay. You have to know what to look for. You have to have the right pick and you have to trade in the right direction. So not only do you have to have the pick, you have to know what the heck you're going to do with it. You won't make money going long a stock that falls. You won't make money uh, basically shorting a stock that rallies. You have to know how to trade it. No, you don't have to be a contrarian at all. I think it has to do with what you learn. I think if you have learned gaps incorrectly, you are an ideal candidate for my class because you're gonna, it's gonna blow your world around and you're saying, oh my gosh, no wonder everything I've been doing with these things hasn't worked. And then you're gonna see the way I see it. It's like a window into my world which is what I teach. You're going to have to see what I see. You're going to say, oh, now I see what I'm supposed to be doing. And you didn't know. It was just that you didn't know. You know, trading is not some mystery if you know what to look for. It's just that many people don't know what to look for. Then after that, you still have to have the discipline, which again is what Adrian talks about and teaches in her classes. So I mean, even if you know what to look for, if you're not disciplined, you're going to have troubles. But I think the discipline comes easy if you have confidence in yourself and you have conviction in the strategy and you're like, well, I can just do it. I know I can do it. Uh, I didn't even look at the apple today. If we have time when we're done here, I can look at it. Or if we don't, I'll do a video for you, Dana, on YouTube. I did not do anything with the apple today, but I can look at it for you. I'll do a video on the apple for you later. One R equals one risk unit. A risk unit is the amount of money you're risking per trade in dollars and cents. A risk unit should be sized according to the size of your cash balance and your account. Okay, here's what... Dan was asking earlier, if you risk 5% of the cash balance risk per day, you can divide that into five trades. I'm giving you an option here. So if you want to take a risk of 5%, you can divide it up into five trades. This is a good example here. If your total amount per day, you take five trades and risk one R. So let's say you're going to give yourself $500 a day. Divide it up, you can take five trades with $100 risk. That doesn't mean that you have to take five trades. It means you could take five trades if you want to, if you had five good gaps. The goal is to make three risk units per trade. Golden gaps provide setups that have a 3 R payout. In other words, for every dollar you risk, you can make at least three on the low end and up to $10 or more in the high end if the stock goes to the dream target. GM Star was one of those. A good risk to reward payout is one of the most significant reasons to learn the golden gap system. And PPY today went to the target. It was $10. The dream target for that would have been $9.70. So BBY didn't get to 970 day, which is a dream, but you know what the regular targets are and you know what the dream targets. And again, I teach this in the class. Now, if you're looking to make an income of, let's say, 20 grand a month, again, you should be risking an advanced amount. Do you do this right after the class? No, you have to start out with what you can afford and work up to it. Now, I have had people actually the trade the first week after practicing for a week and then can afford to do this and do you want to do it and, and our experienced traders but don't know how to trade gaps, take my class, have the money, trade for a week, risking like 200 bucks and then, 
you know, start to risk more. That is fine. You need to balance yourself again with your own balance and know where you're at, what you're ready to risk once you have the money or if you have the money now. Once a trader is experienced with the system, you can learn to do ads with the original position. Doing ads helps you make more money with less risk. It will also help you get good at holding the bigger targets. So for example, if you risk $500 one hour unit, three hours equals $1,500 in the low end. If you get a six hour trade, that's $3,000 in the mid end. And if you get a 10 hour trade like the GMCR was, it's $5,000 in the high end. So it has to do with the number of R's. That's why I was describing that. That R unit should be the same for every trade you take, whether it's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. In order to make $20,000 a month, you would need to make 40 hours a month or 10 hours a week. Or like the example I showed you earlier, if you want to make $750 a day, that is $195 a year. Okay, that's pretty darn close. But we're talking here if you want to make like $250,000 a year. So three, three hour trades a week is nine hours. That's basically it. Okay, so you can make three, three. So there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you have five days in the week, three days of the week, you make three hours, boom. That's, that's it, okay? And so what do you do? So one day maybe you don't get anything good. One day maybe you take a loss. I mean, if you break it down, again, chunking it out, chunking it out, you can see how $4,500 a week is 18 grand a month. And then, there, there you are, okay? It's not that complicated once you break it down. Many people are just looking for some humongous trade every day, and then they pile up the losses trying to get to the humongous trade. You have to take it step by step. Two two hour trades is ten hours a week. Two you could two you could do you could just say I'm gonna make two hours a day, two hours a day, two hours a day, two hours a day, five days in a week. That's ten hours a week. Two hours a day? That's not even that much. Okay. Uh, I have some questions here. It's what I use here. It's what I use here now. It varies between five and six hundred dollars. Erickson is my risk unit. I haven't stepped it up past that. I would love to have a thousand dollar R. I will say though, there are some days when I do an ad where I actually risk more. That is not all the time, but where I've risked that much. But it's not every day, and it's not my R. And it's only when I do an ad. But for the most part, it's been five to six hundred, and I'm roughing it because I have to take the trades pretty quickly, and I'm not like thirty seven cents exactly. I'm usually like in my mind, I'm like thirty five, forty, thirty. Like if it ends up being thirty thirty seven, I'll size it for thirty five. Like if it ends up being 40, one off size it for 40. Because I'm doing this in my head, okay? I'm very good with numbers, but it's arithmetic. It's simple arithmetic when you're sizing yourself and figuring out the share size. I don't take the same lot size in every trade. You can't. If I did, then sometimes my R would be $2,000. Sometimes it would be two hundred. You can't. You cannot take the same share size. People that trade lot sizes, their risk is different all the time. And their equity curve is like, woo, like this. Your amount of money of the risk, which is based on the stop, and the, is, changes the position size. Okay, so it has to be the amount of the R. That's the right way to actually calculate it and figure it out. <laughs> What's my mass limit, max loss per week that I give myself? Honestly, what I allow myself, I allow myself to take six trades a day. Do I ever take six trades a day? No, <laughs> but I said that a long time ago. I, at a place where I needed to take six trades a day, I, I don't even use, if I'm down three trades in a day, something's wrong. Something is wrong, like wrong with me, like I'm sick or something, okay? Like I don't use up all my risk, so it's negligible as far as what it matters because I never get myself to that point. You got to pull yourself back and say, wait a minute, something's wrong, and you just stop. So I never get myself to that point. But you still have to have the, the numbers because at the beginning you might, if you are running off the deep end with yourself, you have to be very disciplined though. And if you're doing what me, I'm doing, just following me, you should just follow me. Do you have an average list of stocks you trade regularly? No. And do you have a live trading room with your students? A trade set up? Yes. I run a live trading room every day from 8.30 to 11. Tom signed out. He's in it. Sanford's in it. They are in it. They're getting the calls. They're taking the trades. They do exactly what I say if they want to. Could they do other things? Sure, they could too. Or you could take the trades that I make, the calls that I make. You must do the class to join the live trading room. People always say, well, I want to join the room and not do the class. No one is in the room that has not done my class. Everyone that's in the room has done the class, knows the points, knows how to take the setups, and they're there. You don't have to uh, actually join the room if you don't want to, but you must take the class to join the room. No exceptions, so please don't ask me. 
I feel as a person to be a responsible individual and educator that people need to learn how to trade before they take any risk doing gaps. These trades set up at 931. You have to know what you're looking for to do it. I want you to do well. I don't want you to copycat me and mimic me and not know what a gap is. Okay, it's to your benefit to learn it. And you know what? What if I'm not teaching 10 years from now? Because I'm telling you right now, I'm probably not going to be. I'm young and I'm very successful. So you want to learn how to do this, learn how to do it for me now. Because I can tell you right now, I'm not going to be teaching this class forever. I am not a career educator. I'm a career trader. I'm a young, successful woman living in Manhattan. I have no idea what I'm going to be a year from now. <laughs> you want me to be honest with you. And, I, and I'm doing very well, but who knows, you know. So learn from me now. Learn it. If you're risking $500 a trade and making one trade per day, is a monthly goal of $20,000 realistic? And how large an account do you need to risk $55 a day? Okay, let me go back to that in a minute because that's a long question. How do you find stocks to trade? I look on my scanner on my platform. You can have a profit account or a retail account. It's up to you. You shop for your own broker. I'm, I'm not a broker. You can go shop around. Do I keep constant money in the trading account? Of course. Of course I do. What do you mean? Of course. Otherwise, I couldn't keep the same risk for myself. Uh, and I think everyone should do that, too. Unless you're at the point where you're trying to build it up. Like, like let's say you do, uh, Eric just brought up the prop account. Let's say you start with a prop account and you have $5,000. If you want to build it up to ten, then you're not going to pay yourself. But here's my suggestion, and take it for what it's worth. I still think you should. So let's just say you have a prop account with $5,000 and you want to build it up to ten. I think it's so important to pay yourself. It's so important for so many reasons I can't even tell you. And I did this for myself. So I would pay yourself half. Pay yourself something, okay? You need to do that. So let's say you start out with a prop account with $5,000. You want to work it up to ten. I still think you should pay yourself half the profit every two weeks, every week, every month. And you keep the rest in there and you, however long it takes you to get up to the ten. RG likes to pay herself idea. You have to do it. You know what the problem is? People are in equity curve is down. They don't pay themselves, so they never think. Listen, they think that they're not. They think the idea of paying themselves, they don't even believe. Think about what I'm saying. It's like the idea of paying themselves is like a dream come true, like a fantasy world that's never going to happen. Make your dream come true. Pay yourself. You deserve it. All right, let me go back to Alan's questions were long. If you're risking $500 a $500 a trade and making one trade a day, okay, is a monthly goal of $20,000 realistic and how large account do you need? I would say to yourself that you, I'm going to fast forward here to the class, uh, the class information on these questions uh, because we're getting low to the time here. I would say that if you want to take one trade a day uh, risking $500, and you only want to do one. If you take one and the one doesn't work, you're going to have to stop then, Alan. Now, if you have two good gaps, you could take two. Now, I'm like, again, I could take two trades. If one works and one doesn't, you might still have a day. But if you stop right after one, then you might be down on that day. So I would say you still got to give yourself more than one trade a day. I mean, that's just my advice. I think one is too tight. Although I usually do one because I usually do get it right in the pick. But I'm just saying I still think you need to give yourself more than one. Some months you will make more than 20000 and some months you will make less. Again, it's a busy season. Like fall is a busy season here. Fall is a very busy time. So it's an active time to have really big months. Around maybe Christmas or the holidays, you might not have a really big month like that. Again, you're looking at the annual goals for things. Does that make sense? Uh, let me just answer some more questions here. And then I'm just going to show you the information about the class. I'm just going to scroll through this here because I want to make sure we, we end here on time. I'm a trader, and, and if you want it, more information about the live room, email me. And the class is this weekend. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free. So if you pay for the class the first time, you can retake it anytime after that for free. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The class is called the Golden Gap. It's a professional bearish gap system. It's Saturday and Sunday. Saturday is 9 to 3. Sunday is 9 to 5. Monday, I'm going to do live trading and we're going to do gap analysis in the live from 8.30 to noon. Cost of the class is $29.99. Email me if you want to sign up. I already have people that are registered. If you want to sign up, email me at melissa at the stock 
And I'm also doing, like I said, that bonus day on Monday. I have another class called the Trends Course. This is in October, October 1st and 2nd. It teaches about long-term trends. This is mostly for swing trading or core trading. And if you want to do both classes together, it's $34.99. You can save $4.99. Uh, now, let me just answer some questions here quickly. How long have I been teaching students since I started the business, which was the end of December 2012? Will I be limiting how many I take? No, because I know I'm not going to do this for, you know, 20 years. So at this point now, I'm not limiting the number of people I take to teach overall. I do limit the number of people I take each class, though, because I teach the class myself and it can't go on until 10 o'clock at night. And I want to make sure I answer everyone's questions. So it's like a boutique uh, classes. I limit the number of people I have in each class. If I had 100 people in the class, the class would go on to midnight. So I have small classes or medium classes, small compared to probably a lot of other companies, though, so that I can give the individual attention. People learn how to trade. What is important to me is that you do well and learn how to trade. And guess what? Then you'll tell your friends, and, and, and it creates a good environment. It's a good environment then. How long have you been living access recording? Yes. I think I answered everyone's questions. Got a little rushed at the end here, but uh, Adrian taped it. I taped it too. Go to my YouTube site. Email me if you have any questions at Melissa at thestockswish.com. Email me if you'd like a trial of the trading room for the rest of the week. Today's Tuesday. You could be in the room Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday's the deadline, though, to sign up for the class this weekend. Thanks so much, Adrian, for having me. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Have a fantastic evening. And I'll do the video on Apple in a little bit here for Dan. You're welcome.